On my desktop, I have a simple PowerPoint file. My first task is to get this file uploaded to my Google Drive. Now, there are a variety of ways to accomplish this, but the easiest and most straightforward is by simply launching your browser, going into your Google Drive, and taking the file and dragging it and dropping it right onto the Drive window. After a few seconds, you'll notice the PowerPoint has been uploaded and is now safely stored online in your Google Drive. Now that my presentation has been uploaded into my Google Drive, there are a few things I can do with it. Ultimately, I want to be able to edit this online using a tool known as Google Slides. At the moment, the file is still a PowerPoint file, and I can tell that by looking at the P icon underneath the thumbnail photo of the slideshow. To open this file in Slides is very simple. Right-click on the file, select Open With, and Google Slides. Google will now automatically convert your presentation from a PowerPoint into a Google Slides file that can be edited online. I'd like to do one more thing before I start editing this presentation, and that is head back over to my Google Drive, where, as you will notice, I now have two copies of this presentation. One is the original PowerPoint, and the other is the new Google Slides version. Now I'm actually going to go ahead and make yet another copy of this because I'd like to have a version that I pare down which can be sent out to my students, as well as a version that is complete with all of the notes and information that I will reserve for myself, the teacher. To copy a file in Google Drive is very simple. Right click on the thumbnail and select make a copy. Once the copy has been created, you can right-click on it and you can rename it to something that makes more sense. Now that I have a teacher and student copy of my Google Slides presentation, I'd like to edit the student version. So I'm going to double tap on it in my drive and allow it to open in Google Slides where I can edit it. What's great about Google Slides is that you can incorporate a variety of media, including things like embedded YouTube videos, links to further reading websites and articles, and you can even do things like leave certain parts of your notes blank for students to fill in during class discussions. So for example, I might say, all living things are made up of, and instead of typing in the word cells, simply do a dot dot dot. And that's going to tell my students that during our discussion, they need to edit this and fill in the keywords. I might do it again here and say, cells are the dot dot dot, and students would have to put in the definition. On other slides where I have diagrams, I can also come in and edit it by removing the text from these boxes and asking students to label them during our class discussion. What's nice about this approach is that once the discussion is completed, students will have a beautiful, interactive, and engaging set of notes saved in their Google Drive, which is accessible on any device as long as you're connected to the internet. These can be easily shared with the teacher if you're interested in checking on student work or shared with colleagues or friends so that studying becomes easier. Google Slides is a really powerful tool for classroom collaboration and sharing of content. Once my teacher presentation and student presentation are complete, I need to start thinking about sharing them with my classes. I'd like to send my student presentation a copy of it to each of my students. Now I can do that by right-clicking on the file and using the share information or copy a link and share that link. But there are some problems there, because if I share a link to the file, when students edit it, they are all going to see those edits. What I really need is to get a copy of this to each of my students so they have their own individual copies to work on. The easiest way to do this is by using Google Classroom. I'm going to open a new tab and enter my Google Classroom. 
I already have a biology classroom set up here. Now I'm going to go into it, and this is what Google Classroom looks like. I'd like to create a new assignment by clicking on the plus button and create assignment. Let's call it cells notes. And I can add a due date if I'd like. Now I'd like to attach that file. So I'm going to click on the Google Drive icon because that's where my file is currently stored. And from the list in my drive, I'm going to select my student presentation and tap on add. And now that file is attached to this assignment. But I have to do a couple more things. First of all, I don't want students to only view the file. Rather, I want them to have their own copy that they can then edit and use as they like. So I'm going to select make a copy for each student. And now I can assign this to my classes. Google is now making a duplicate copy of this presentation for each of my students. It even goes as far as to add the name of the student to the file name for each of them. Now that our Cells Notes presentation has been sent out to each of our students in Google Classroom, let's take a look at what this will appear like from the student perspective. I'm going to open another browser window where I'm logged in as a student in Google Classroom. And you can see I notice this assignment has been published to me. I'm going to click on the assignment to see what it looks like. You'll notice the name of the assignment and the due date, as well as the attached file. And notice what has happened is Google has added the name of the student to the end of the file, meaning this copy is just for me. I can now click on this file and it will automatically open me up in Google Slides where I can view the content and actually come through and edit it. For example, during our discussion, I might complete some of these bits of content that were left out by the teacher. At the end of this, I will have this completely saved in my Google Drive as a student to share and study from throughout the year. Now let's go ahead and make some changes here so we can see something interesting. Maybe as a student I want to bring in an image. So I might go onto the internet and insert an image of a cell. Maybe I like this image. And I'm going to select it and include it on this slide. Now of course that's a little too big so I'm going to make it smaller so it doesn't interfere with my text and put it down here in the corner. And so I've just been able to add content that helps me to understand the information. Now, interestingly, if I go back into the teacher view, where I am right here, I can go into this assignment where I would see all of my students. Of course, right now I only have one student enrolled in the class, but you would see a different box for all of your students here. And if you refresh it, you can actually visit the work of each student. For example, I can see if Ann Fox, my student, is completing her notes by clicking on her copy of the Google Slides presentation. And I can see all the work that she has done up to this point. I can even notice things like that image she just inserted. And if I want to, I can select that image and even add a comment to it. This allows for a new level of interaction and engagement between the teacher and the student. Let's quickly pop back over to the student version of the presentation. And what I notice is right away that teacher comment has shown up. So I'm able to interact paperlessly and actually through the technology with my teacher. This has been just one example of how you can use Google tools to take a simple task like notes and discussions and turn it into something more engaging and collaborative, while also cutting down on your reliance on paper. This same sort of workflow can be done using Google Docs for written content or Google Sheets for numerical analysis and spreadsheet data. Transitioning to Google tools will also make your content safer by storing it online allowing it to be accessed from any device connected to the internet. Take a look at my other videos for more information on getting set up with Google Classroom and using Google tools in education.